So now we understand more about what type 2 inflammation is and how it affects patients, let's now move on to talk about the current shortcomings of care highlighted by patients and experts. I want to come to you first, Professor Smith, if I may. Um, can you explain why it was important to create a paper around type 2 inflammation? Well, I think one of the uh, epitomes of excellence in uh, clinical practice and research practice is combining bench to bedside care. Uh, what has become more uh, relevant and aware in the last 15 to 20 years is what happens in the real world, uh, because we're only defined what presents us in clinics largely. So uh, that is important both to get an understanding of how this works or how these diseases impact people's quality of life, how well our treatments are working. So we can better focus on what we need to do better as far as clinicians and what research questions we need to ask. We also further have needs to uh, provide information for lobbying. There are new medications that are available and that is uh, set up against uh, financial austerity in healthcare systems. Uh, these medicines need to be proven that they have impacts, uh, financial impacts that are worthwhile government subsidising them or health organisations subsidising them. And we can only get this from uh, such, such work as these white papers for these severe diseases that impact people's quality of life. So we're really extending bench to bedside to, from uh, uh, patients' home to the clinic to uh, the bedside to um, the research labs to uh, opportunities for political lobbying. Professor Asami, thank you very much indeed, Professor Smith. Professor Asami, perhaps I could bring you in there. Um, so Professor Smith said it was really important that we had this white paper. Would you agree? Uh, would you like to add anything further to that? Yes, I fully agree that it's very important so that we also when we uh, collaborate all the specialists and experts on the field and, and this is made together with also uh, with, with um, patients who are suffering from these diseases, then we can also ourselves learn much more and we can uh, develop our local systems better and we can learn from, from each other because th we have this this is really a syndrome. Usually there are several diseases overlapping when there are type 2 high diseases and, uh, and we can also get the best of our, our healthcare uh, possibilities from each other and each countries. Thank you very much indeed. Professor Cardell, um, obviously, as we've heard, there was a very big unmet need. We needed the white paper. I think it was really important. I Clearly, it set out a lot of things that, uh, that I think possibly we didn't know before and, and really made those, those points very clear. Let me uh, tell me, uh, what was the expert reaction to the publication of the white paper? What did experts think of it? Yeah, I, I think they, they, what's been most striking was that they, they realized black and white sort of that the, the, the efficiency and the organization of healthcare in, in several European countries uh, was not optimal. It, it, uh, it need, there is a need to be more efficient and, and better organized. And uh, I think that's one thing. And I think also that uh, Another thing that they they talk about that this uh, psychosocial impact of these diseases often are overlooked. Uh, it's just not we only know from the beginning. It was uh, probably known that it was often focused on, on one organ leading to overlooking of the others, but but. Um, sort of uh, the neglect of these sort of global symptoms that that. Uh, uh, sort of affect the well-being of the quality of life. The, that's something that's, that's missed. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Professor Smith, can I bring you in again? You spoke very eloquently there about why we needed uh, this white paper. Um, what does this mean in terms of clinical practice? Obviously, the white pub paper is published. What does it mean for experts in the field? Um, it gives us a patient's perspective of what the needs are. We uh, often just assess things in the clinic and uh, we often get a different message. Patients like to please us and tell us things are going well. <laughs> um, we may not ask the right questions. 
So having a fresh set of eyes is very important. And when we treat diseases, we are often uh, in our own echo chambers, speaking to experts who are asking the same questions, and we think we're doing a great job. Uh, and clearly these uh, white papers uh, show us that from the patient's perspective, there are unmet needs. Uh, our medications and other strategies that we have are not good, doing a good enough job. So mm. it raises research questions for us. It raises uh, better uh, opportunities for dialogues with patients about individualised treatment plans because we're finding these days not every uh, treatment fits everybody. So um, the term precision medicine is being used somewhat loosely, but we, in, we need to individualise things. We're going to get a lot more precise uh, uh, hopefully in the next five to ten years, but uh, it gives us a, a good um, opportunity to reflect on how good we're doing. I mean, right at the beginning of that answer, you said it's all about the patient, and I couldn't agree more. Let's bring in Nelly Clays now. Uh, Nelly, what was your, your, your feeling about the white paper being published? The fact is it was there in black and white. You, you had it there. There was attention driven to the white paper. How do you feel as a patient? <laughs> Um, as patients, I think that we are very happy with it and um, now there is more attention for, for the illness and, and, and we are very, very, um, very happy that, that there is, um, uh, that, that medicals uh, want to listen to each other and learn from each other. And, and just as a patient, I'm just quite interested, are you feeling optimistic that things are changing? You say that you still have side effects, you still have symptoms. Do you think looking forward you're, you're excited about the possibilities? Um, I think it's, it's very positive. Um, I, um, I've, I have hope and, and I think there is a light on, on the end of the, of the tunnel. Fantastic. Well, very well said indeed. Thank you very much to all of you just for uh, the moment. Clearly, a lot of work has, has gone in uh, to address the current shortcomings of care and uh, highlighted by patients, as you saw there, and of course, by experts.